Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and in today's lecture, we are talking about solving exponential and logarithmic equations. And um, in today's lesson, we are going to be rounding our answers. So um, just in general, we are always going to round to three decimal places or points. I don't know why I wrote points, but um, we can go ahead and do it either way. We're just rounding to three places, okay? And the key thing for us to go ahead and do in our lesson is that in order to isolate x, often we will need to change forms. And sometimes we will see um, that we don't need to change forms, that x is by itself. But in this case, okay, x is my exponent, so I definitely need to do something in order to get x all by itself. And I'm actually going to teach you guys two different methods and they both work, and I really do not care which method you use. In fact, I'm gonna do all of these today using both methods just to um, give you guys some exposure to them so you can figure out what works best for you. So our first method is to go ahead and change forms, and we practiced that earlier um, in this chapter where if I have something in exponential form, I can go ahead and write it as a logarithm. So this would become log, base 10, and so I don't need to write anything as the base because we know it's our common logarithm, of 150 is equal to x. So this is something that we can go ahead now and input into our calculator, and we end up getting 2.176 is equal to x. So quite honestly, if you guys feel comfortable changing forms, I think that is actually the easiest way to go about doing it. The second method that we can use is what I'm going to call take a log. And we're very used to, um, when we're solving equations, we can really do whatever we want to one side of the equation as long as we do it to the other side of the equation. So this actually also applies if we take logarithms of both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and say log of 10 to the x equals log of 150. And I really could use any base that I want. Um, I'm choosing to just use our common logarithm here because I have a 10 there, which we'll kind of see what happens. Um, but we learned in our last lecture that if I have an exponent, I can bring it out in front. So I have x times log of 10 equals the log of 150. Now, I know that the log of 10 is actually just equal to 1 because we learned when our base and the number we are taking the logarithm of are the same that it's always equal to 1. 1 times x is x. So I have x equals log of 150, which when I put into my calculator, I get 2.176. So notice we get the same answer either way we go about solving it. It really is just a personal preference for you. Number two, 10 to the x power equals cabin. By the way, there is a note handout if you didn't open that up. Um, I'm just choosing to not write on that because I have more things that I want to write that don't really fit on there. So anyways, um, this looks kind of weird. Let's try and isolate this x and let's change forms. So this would be log base 10, so I don't need to write that, of cabin equals x. Oh. It's not a great math joke. So log cabin equals x. Speaking of good math jokes, here we go. What noise does it make when you hit a tree with a drumstick? A logarithm. I know, you can't handle my jokes. Let's move on to number three. Number three is as easy as it's going to get because x is already isolated. So I'm just going to have to evaluate what is log of 0 0.0041. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my calculator and I get negative 2.387 is equal to x. And I just want to remind us what this means. What we just found is that 10 to the negative 2.387 power is equal to 0 0.0041 because we know when we find a value of a logarithm, it really is an exponent. 
Okay, number four, two to the x equals nine. We dealt with a lot of problems like this previously, um, but our issue this time is that I don't know how to write nine as two to a power. So if I'm using that first method, I'm going to change this into exponential form, which would be log base two of nine equals x. Last class, we learned how to use our change of base formula. So I'm going to do log of nine divided by log of two is equal to x. When I put this in my calculator, I get 3.170 equals x. If we use the second method, and I'm taking a log of both sides, I would do log of two to the x equals log of nine. I know my x goes out in front, so I have x times log of two equals log of nine. In order to get x all by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides by log of two. So I have log of nine, and I'm gonna use parentheses, divided by log of two, which amazingly is the same thing we did over here, and I end up getting x is 3.170. Okay, so I want to stress once again, it does not matter which of these two methods you use. Um, we're gonna see both of them being used in this lecture, and you can choose what you like the best. Number five, we're trying to figure out 5.1 to what power is equal to 13? So once again, I'm going to start with um, changing forms, and this would be log base 5.1 of 13 is equal to x. When I use my change of base formula, log of 13 divided by log of 5.1 equals x. And when I put that into my calculator, I get 1.574 is x. And as I'm going through this, you guys, I would really encourage you to put those in your calculator to double check that you're doing it correctly um, because you can see what the correct answer should be and you can just verify that you are getting that as well. Okay, so method number two, let's just say I decided to take a log of both sides. So once again, I can move my x out in front, so I have x times the log of 5.1 equals the log of 13. When I divide both sides by the log of 5.1, and I put this into my calculator, I end up getting that x is 1.574. Okay, and once again, I want to stress, you do not need to do both of those. That would be silly. I'm just showing you, you can do this method or this method. Number six is one that can throw us off sometimes, and we're actually going to have to solve this quite a bit in our next lecture. So I'm going to start by changing forms, and I know log base E is ln. So I have ln of 72 is equal to x. So if I put this in my calculator, I get 4.277 is equal to x. If I am taking a log of both sides, okay, we said earlier, whatever I do to one side, I, can, I have to do to the other side. And so this time, instead of taking log, what if I did ln of e to the x equals ln of 72? And really, on any of these, I could use whatever base I want. The reason why I'm going to go ahead and use ln this time is when I move my x out in front, I have x times ln of e equals ln of 72. But I know that ln of e is just equal to 1 because log base e of e would be 1. So I get x equals 4.277. Okay, so... Looking back, um, I often, when we're using this method, either just use log or ln because that's what we can put in our calculator. But hypothetically, you could use any base you want. You might just need to do a little bit more work with that. Okay, so um, these were all problems where our variable is in our exponent. It's pretty repetitive, um, but we see this problem quite a bit, and this is the whole reason why logarithms exist, so that we can solve problems like this. Now number seven looks very, very different. Log base five of x equals three. 
Okay, the problem is x is inside my logarithm. This is an entire expression. I can't just divide by log 5 to get x by itself. So, we learned earlier when we aren't sure what to do, we should change forms. So, this would become 5 to the third power equals x. So, 125 is equal to x. Okay, so if it is in log form, and um, one of these is our x value, I always want to change it into exponential form, and it's pretty simple for us to solve from there. Okay, number eight. Number eight looks more complicated because I have a fancier um, exponent going on here. So our first method would be to go ahead and change forms and make this log base three of 17 equals x plus five. So in my calculator, I'm going to do log of 17 divided by log of three. And this is when um, keeping things exact in our calculator becomes really important. Obviously, I can't write out every single decimal. That would be really dumb. Um, but I do want to keep my answer exact until the final answer. I don't want to round until we got to get to the final answer. So I'm going to write that this is 2.579, but I'm keeping that entire decimal in my calculator. Then, to get x by itself, I would subtract 5 from both sides. And when I do second negative, that gives me my previous answer. And I end up getting negative 2.421 is equal to our x value. Okay, so I do not want to round until we get to this final answer. If I was taking a log of both sides... I have log of 3 to the x plus 5 equals log of 17. I'm going to move that x plus 5 out in front because of our power property. And since those two are multiplied by each other, I could divide by log of 3 to go ahead and isolate it. So when I put that in my calculator, and I'm going to remember my parentheses, um, once again, I'm keeping this exact value in my calculator and then subtracting 5 from it. And magically, once again, I get the same exact answer. Number 9 gets tough because, and I want to put a giant like star by this one. I need to look and see what is being taken to the power. And in this case, just E is being taken to the 2x power. Okay, if 4 was being taken to the power, we would see parentheses around that entire value. So before I can do anything, my first step must be dividing both sides by 4. So I have e to the 2x power equals 5 fourths. At this point, let's go ahead and change forms. ln of 5 fourths equals 2x. Ln of 5 fourths is approximately 0.223. I'm keeping that entire exact answer in my calculator. Then when I divide by 2, I end up getting 0.112 is equal to our x value. If we were using the other method, I might do ln of e to the 2x equals ln of 5 fourths. My 2x goes out in front. And I know that ln of e is 1, so I'm just going to write 2x equals ln of 5 fourths. So 2x is equal to 0.223. When I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 0.112. And number 10, which you may think is the last problem, but it's not because I'm going to add two more on because we are so advanced and I want to make sure we feel good on our homework. Okay. So 3 to the 2x equals 80. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change forms because whatever's my base here is already isolated, okay? Um, it's not something times 3 to the 2x, so I can jump ahead and just write log base 3 of 80 equals 2x. So in my calculator, I'm going to do log of 80 divided by log of 3, which is... 
3.989. Of course, I'm keeping that entire thing rounded in my calculator, or not rounded, exact in my calculator. When I divide by 2, I get 1.994 equals x. Okay, so once again, super important that I am not rounding until my final answer. If I was using our other method, log of 3 to the 2x equals log of 80. So I get 2x times log of 3 equals log of 80. I would divide both sides by log of 3. And I need my parentheses. Those cancel out. So I get 2x equals 3.989. When I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 1.994. So the vast majority of your problems are going to be this level of difficulty. I want to actually take us a step further um, so that you guys will feel confident when you look at your homework. Some of the ones in your homework look like this, which I think looks difficult. And if we don't explore it, my guess is half of you would look at this and skip it or just look on Calc Chat which is nice if I'm checking my answer, but not if I'm trying to actually learn how to do it. So, um, what I just wanna remind us of, I wanna remind us of some basic, basic um, algebra skills. So if I had something like x squared cubed versus x squared times x cubed, I know when I'm taking an exponent to a power, we multiply. When I am multiplying things that have um, the same base, I add their exponents. So what that means for me, this e to the 2x power is like e to the x squared because x times 2 is 2x. So this is actually something that is factorable. So if I'm factoring this, I know e to the x times e to the x would give me e to the 2x because I would add x plus x, which is 2x. And I need to think what factors of negative 5 add up to be negative 4. And I'm thinking negative 5 and positive 1. So I'm going to set both of these equal to 0. So I get e to the x equals 5. For time's sake, I'm only going to use one method. I'm just going to change forms because I think that's easier. ln of 5 equals x. I know ln of 5 is 1.609. Okay. Next, I have e to the x equals negative 1. So if you did ln of negative 1 equals x, as soon as you guys put this into your calculator, you are going to get an error. And the reason why you would get an error is because e to the x cannot equal a negative value. If we think about our graph, okay, we know that there's actually an asymptote here, and our graph would look something like this. So there's, we are never, ever going to have a negative 1 value because that would be down here. Okay, so what this gave us was an extraneous solution. So we don't even care about it, and our only answer would be 1.609. So just a reminder, if you get an error in your calculator, often it's because it's giving us something that does not exist. Okay, last problem I promise here. Um, I wanted to look at this because often we try and make the easier problems as more difficult than they need to be. Okay, so if we look at this, e to the 2x equals e to the x plus 3. The thing that jumps out of me right away is we have the same base, so that means my exponents are equal to each other. So when I subtract x from both sides, I get x equals 3, and we are done. Okay, so... Um, your homework tonight's going to have a variety of these types of problems. Um, even if your suggested problem um, doesn't cover one of these um, particular methods or types of problems, I would make sure that you guys are looking through the suggested problems, doing as many problems as you need to do in order to feel confident in this particular topic.